Hello everybody, my name is Esteban Reis, and it's my mission to create the world's greatest prosthetic limbs. There's about 1.6 million people living in the United States with limb loss, and by 2050, that number is expected to increase to 3.6 million due to an increase in the age of people in this country on average, and an increase in the number of people with diabetes. You can think of a prosthetic limb as being made out of a rigid outer supporting structure and a softer internal interface. Now that interface grips the residual limb with a rubbery friction, the same way your shoes grip the floor. But who here has ever stepped on a slippery floor? It's the same problem with residual limbs. Once that limb starts to sweat, it starts sliding around in that socket, and that rubbing and friction can lead to blisters and sores and rashes and pain. And these liners currently are made out of oil-based polymers. Sweat is made out of water. Oil and water don't mix, so the sweat stays trapped in there all day long, leaving the skin weakened and vulnerable to infections. And that makes for an unhappy limb. But now there's a solution, the Aquapore TI. Aquapore TI is a moisture permeable prosthetic interface. Our key enabling technology is a cutting edge biomaterial developed in the field of bioengineering in the last five to 10 years for the purpose of making artificial cartilage, corneal tissue repair and the like. And because this, this polymer has a water base to it and sweat is made out of water, Sweat is going to drain out of the residual, out of the prosthetic limb and out of the socket. By preventing the, the sweat from uh, staying in the socket all day long, we prevent the infections and the sores and the pain, and that makes for a happy residual limb. I graduated from UCLA with a degree in bioengineering and a specialization in biomaterials and regenerative medicine. Dr. Brianza, my research mentor, is an authority on tissue interface and skin interaction with friction and moist environments. Sarah Peterson, my clinical mentor, is an accomplished certified prosthetist. This market is fueled by an increase in the number of amputees. Our main competitors are Autobot, Oser, Willwood, and Alps. The global market for all prosthetics in 2014 was $1.1 billion. And the market for prosthetic liners alone in the United States is $55 million. You can see this market has doubled in the past 10 years, thanks to a steady growth rate of between 5 and 8% annually. Let's take a look at the industry cash flows so we can really get an idea for who our customers are. Insurance or third party payers pay the clinician $600 to provide a prosthetic liner to the end user. And the distributors who sold them that product purchased it from the suppliers for about $150. We will be this new supplier. So our goal is to make a prosthetic liner which is competitively priced for distributors but which satisfies the needs of the end user and is simple enough for the clinicians to provide. Our startup model will be a lean startup model developed by Eric Rice in 2011. We hope to reach a minimally viable product by summer 2016 and do initial testing with that in Pittsburgh to show efficacy and demand. This is an FDA class one product, so no further approval is required. Long term, we hope to partner with the distributors such as Cascades Prosthetic Supply. The legitimacy that comes with representation by a distributor like this itself has a large value to it and is a critical milestone. Up till now, our prior work focused on developing computer models to validate our theories on and design the prosthetic liners. We've also used focus groups to talk to end users and clinicians, and we use this data to garner industry support from the companies you can see here. With the $3,000 we received, we hit the ground running and got raw materials and started to manufacture gels and we've developed novel processes to save time and money in manufacturing them. With the $15,000, we would like to build prototypes to start testing in human participants, and we'd like to reach our MVP, our minimally viable product, by summer 2016. <coughs> I want to leave you with one last quote. Since 2006, it has been my mission to create the world's greatest prosthetic limbs. Aquaport TI does take us another step in this direction. And I'm excited to take this product and this company as far as it will go. Thank you very much. And if there's any questions. Yes? In your pricing, do you have enough uh, profit margin for your distributors? Or are you going to sell over the net? What is your go-to-market strategy that supports your pricing? We plan, well, let me explain the pricing a little bit. The Center for Medicaid Services determines through competitive bidding what the reimbursement cost will be. 
and the distributor tries to sell the product, so it's an incentive for the clinician to make a profit on each one. So our goal is to sell something the distributor can make a little money off of. That's why I threw that number of 150. That number is actually a negotiated number between each individual supplier and the distributor. We believe that because we have a very novel and exciting product, we'll get a great deal with the distributor, and therefore we'll have a wide enough margin. Yes? It's so intuitive to have something that's not rubber, uh, as you said at the beginning. Right. Have people tried this before and not been successful? Nobody's tried it, this approach with this technology because, as I mentioned, these uh, rubbery materials were developed only in the last five to ten years and are largely known for their applications in implants and bioengineering and are not really known to the field of rehabilitation science. They have been tested in other applications and are useful for those. Yes? How, how is this applied? Is it, is it poured into the socket so that it, it adjusts to any person's anatomy? Right. So the way currently liners are made is they're made with lots of different sizes. You can imagine there's lots of different sizes of residual limbs. And we're thinking we'll go with that model with a, maybe a small, a medium, and a large size to start with. Especially when we start with our lean startup and our minimally viable product, we'll have a very limited number of sizes. But as the demand increases, we'll increase that range to accommodate more people. Yes? Um, are there any additional markets <clears throat> that you would explore that this would fit into? The bioengineered material that is? The bioengineered material, absolutely. Like, like I said, the, art, the initial purpose for it was artificial cartilage, corneal tissue repair, and I can envision it being used for covering implants to make them biocompatible within the body, and also perhaps in seating surfaces to make them um, more biocompatible. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thanks.